Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Dragon Age Origins. My name is Tony and I go by Rainbow Dude on the internet. Um, we have a campsite now. And we got some people to talk to. So we'll start with Barkspawn because he is the best boy. Oh, why you little? What? What did he do? Why are you harassing my dog? Me? Harassing your dog? I should say it's the other way round. Your furry friend here took offense at me getting near his food. He snapped at me. Look. Uh, there's hardly any blood drawn, but I guess he shouldn't have. Sometimes I forget that he's a war dog. That'll teach me. <laughs> Such a good dog. All right, Alistair, let's see what you have to say. What do you need? Do you want to talk about Duncan? You don't have to do that. I know you didn't know him as long as I did. Uh, the, he was like a father to you, though. I understand. I, I should have handled it better. Duncan warned me right from the beginning. I can adjust the lumbar happen. support on the chair. Any of us could die in battle. I shouldn't have lost it. Not when so much is riding on us. Not with the blight and and everything. I'm sorry. There's no harm done, Alistair. I'd like to have a proper funeral for him. Maybe once this is all done, if we're still alive. I don't think he had any family to speak of. I think that's an excellent idea. I think he came from High Ever, or so he said. Maybe I'll go up there sometime. See about putting up something in his honor. Oh. I don't know. That's Have sweet. you had someone close to you die? Not that I mean to pry, I'm just... Um... Not really. Not since I went to the tower. That must have felt a lot like when I got sent to the Chantry. You mages don't even get a say in the matter, after all. Thank you. Really, I mean it. It was good to talk about it, at least a little. Maybe I'll go to High Ever with you, when you go. I'd like that. So would he, I think. <laughs> Sorry, I should have done this before I started recording. Hmm. Uh, can we talk to Alice? What more? do you need? I'd like to ask you something. Ask away. What can the Templar do? Essentially, exactly? they're trained to fight. The Chantry would tell you that the Templars exist simply to defend. But don't let them fool you. They're an army. The other main purpose for a Templar is, of course, to hunt mages. To that end, we train in talents that drain mana and disrupt spells. So couldn't others learn these talents? Perhaps, but there usually isn't much of an opportunity. The Chantry keeps a close rein on its Templars. We are given lyrium to help develop our magical talents, you see. Which means we become addicted. And since the Chantry controls the lyrium trade with the dwarves, well, I'm sure you can put two and two together. So you were addicted to this lyrium? Thankfully, no. You only start receiving lyrium once you've taken your vows. You don't need lyrium in order to learn the Templar talents. Lyrium just makes Templar's talents more effective. Or so I was told. Maybe it doesn't even do that. The Chantry usually doesn't let their Templars get away either, so they can spread their secrets. I'm a bit of an exception. Lucky me. I wonder if he's the first Templar warden. Uh, can we talk to you more? What do you need? Ask away. Uh, how did he become a warden? Same way you did. You drink some blood, you choke on it, and pass out. You haven't forgotten already, have you? You know what I mean. I do my best. <laughs> what can I say? Let's see. I was in the Chantry before. I trained for many years to become a Templar, in fact. That's where I learned most of my skills. Uh, you don't seem like the religious sort. You're telling me I was banished to the kitchens to scour the pots more times than I can count. And that's a lot. I, I can count pretty high. The Grand Cleric didn't want to let me go. Duncan was forced to conscript me, actually. And was she ever furious when he did? I thought she was going to have us both arrested. I was lucky. I, um... Why did the Grand Cleric want to keep you? I wondered that myself. It's not as if she valued me highly. I think she just didn't want to give anything to the Grey Wardens, is all. The oh, no. Didn't much. 
And I think I can I'm do more fighting the blight club. anyhow, rather than sitting in a temple Jamie somewhere. Mackins. I'll always be thankful to Duncan for recruiting me. If it hadn't been for him, you know, I would never... Oh, I'm so embarrassed. I wouldn't have. Uh, he was a good man. He was. A good man who didn't deserve his fate. That much, I'm sure of. Come on, let's go. I think I'm done talking. I'm so embarrassed, you guys. Uh, you said let's go, but I want to keep talking to you, Alistair. Oh, can I not? Are you done talking to me now? What do you need? There we go. I was just clicking the wrong button. Ask away. Uh, so Arl Eamon raised oh, you? Did I say that? I meant that dogs raised me. Giant slobbering dogs from the Anderfells. A whole pack of them, in you fact. You probably can't even see my shirt. <laughs> um, I thought you were raised by the Chantry. Oh, there you go, listening to me again. You'd think you'd have gotten past that already. I ended up in the Chantry, sure, but I didn't start there. Let's see, how do I explain this? I'm a bastard. And before you make any mm. smart comments, I mean the fatherless kind. My mother was a serving girl in Redcliffe Castle who died when I was very young. Our Lehman wasn't my father, but he took me in anyhow and put a roof over my head. He was good to me, and he didn't have to be. I respect the man, and I don't blame him anymore for sending me off to the Chantry once I was old enough. So you know who your father is? I know who I was told was my father. He died even before my mother did, anyhow. It isn't important. Ah Lehman eventually married a young woman from Orlais, which caused all sorts of problems between him and the king because it was so soon after the war. But he loved her. Anyhow, then you, Arlesa, resented the rumors which pegged me as his bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. The Arl didn't care, but she did. So off I was packed to the nearest monastery at age ten. Just as well. The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't a home to me by that point. She despised me. Hmm. What an awful thing to do to a child. Maybe. She felt threatened by my presence. I can see that now. I can't say I blame her. She wondered if the rumors were true herself, I bet. I remember I had an amulet with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's. I was so furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall and it shattered. Mm. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The Isle came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated it there and blamed him for everything. And eventually, he just stopped coming. You were young. Young, young kids make stupid mistakes. And raised by dogs. Or I may as well have been, the way I acted. <laughs> yeah, but maybe all young bastards act like that. I don't know. All I know is that the Arl is a good man and well-loved by the people. He also was King Caelan's uncle, so he has a personal motivation mm. to see Loghain pay for what he did. Anyway, that's really all there is to the story. Well, thank you for sharing it. But I'm going to bug you more. What do you need? Ask away. Uh, why have you remained a Templar if you hate the Chantry? Have you seen the uniform? It's not only stylish, but well made. I'm a sucker for good tailoring. I thought they... We'll, we'll make a joke. In that case, you should have become a mage. Oh, you aren't kidding. I think the Templar uniforms are as colorful as they are, just so the Templars didn't feel dull in comparison. Last thing you want when you're about to take down some Maleficar out in the woods is to have him point and laugh at your taste in clothing, am I right? Uh, so what's the real reason? You don't really want to know about my being a Templar, do you? It's really quite boring. Uh, <laughs> I do want to know, yes. Poke, poke, poke. Tell me everything about your life, Alistair. All right. If you well, insist, yes, I want to know more about like you. I'm a good friend. To do, right? <laughs> the truth of the matter is that I did hate going to the monastery. The initiates from poor families thought I put on airs, while the noble ones called me a bastard and ignored me. I felt like Al Eamon had cast me off unwanted, and I was determined to be bitter. But I took some solace in the training itself, I guess. I was actually quite good at it. What about it did you enjoy? The education, mostly, but also the discipline. You need to have a disciplined mind in order to use the abilities we have. 
It was difficult, but rewarding. I never really felt at home anywhere, though, until I joined the Grey Wardens. And Duncan felt my Templar abilities might be useful for when we encountered Darkspawn magic, so I kept it up. What about you? Do you have anywhere you consider home? The Circle of Magi's Tower was, uh, was home. But it's not your home anymore, right? You can never go back for good. I think I understand how you feel. We won't always be traveling like this, you know. Once the war is over, once the blight is... Well, a time will come when we'll have to think about having a real home again. Though that seems like a far ways off. And I suppose the Grey Wardens are gone for good. Either way. They can always be rebuilt. I suppose you're right. We can create new Grey Wardens, but we'll never get back those we lost. I wonder if it would ever feel the same. Anyhow, now I've sidetracked us. We'd better get back to what we're supposed to be doing right now. That's a, a good point because, and I'm going to go off on a bit of a tangent here. Um, this year I have been a little bit more involved in the in my local LGBT community um, than I have been previously. And so, like, part of that has been going out and, like, just getting to know people and watching like documentaries and things like that and one that i watched was called paris is burning and it is about an area of new york prior to and during the hiv aids epidemic pandemic um and it really just highlighted for me a lot of the culture that we lost because of hiv aids and the failure of the government to act um specifically the reagan administration um and it really kind of hit me for the first time because I'm, I'm a 90s baby. Like, I was, I was born, like, just on the cusp of everything that happened um, when it started to be not a death sentence anymore and then effective treatment started to become an optional. And now we have undetectable equals untransmissible. Um, and so it never really hit me how much we lost because there wasn't really anyone there to say this is what we lost. So I really sympathize with Alistair in wondering, is it ever going to be the same? And I think the answer is no, because you don't have anyone, you don't have anyone left to tell you what you lost, you know? What do you need? Sorry about the, the tangent. But what do you I need? Just, I, I don't think I've ever connected with Alistair Ask like away. that before. Such as they are. Um... Where are the nearest Great Wardens? That's a good question. There's plenty in Orlay, but who knows where they might be found. And the nearest Orlesian city is weeks away. If we go north and cross the sea, there's bound to be some in the free marches. Again, however, I just don't know where. I don't know anything about Grey Wardens in other lands. Is there a headquarters? Here in Ferelden, there's our compound in Denerim at the palace, but that's it. Loghain will have control over that and be watching it, no doubt. Beyond that, the only place I know of is Weishaupt Fortress. That's the headquarters of all Grey Wardens in the Anderfels, a thousand miles from here. But I've no idea how to even contact them. So unless we try to get back to the compound in Denerim, I suppose the answer is no. There's nowhere for us to go. So what happens now? What, uh, no, what do we need to start rebuilding? I mean, eventually we would have to use the joining to make more Grey Wardens, right? But I don't know how to do the joining, or what's involved. I know it involves lyrium and some other magic, and that it's really difficult to prepare, but that's it. Unless we can find out more about the joining, I guess we better get used to the idea that there might only be two of us for now. Until more come from elsewhere. And now that it's just the two of us, what, do we, what happens? I imagine that eventually the Grey Wardens outside of Ferelden will wonder what's happened. Why there's no contact from Duncan or someone. They'll send someone eventually. Though who knows what Loghain's people in Denerim will tell them. Maybe they won't send anyone. Mm. We could try to contact them. But that would mean leaving Ferelden. And even if we did, they couldn't come back with us in time to stop the blight. So that means whatever happens, it's up to us. Me and Alistair against the world. 
And if we just left? Just left? You mean just left for Elden? I don't know. If there's an archdemon, however, we're supposed to be the only ones who can defeat it. And that means the blight would grow unchecked. Eventually, other Grey Wardens in Orlay and other lands would hear about it and they would come to fight it, but they wouldn't come in time to save Ferelden. There's no way. I'm not going anywhere. That's it. About the Grey Wardens, anyhow. Fair enough. What do you need? I think that's all we got. So that's it for conversing with Alistair. Do I have any equipment that I want to put on me? No. Alistair needs more strength for Blight Blood. Eventually, we'll put that on him. Oh, it's actually got backstab though, so we might want to put that on a rogue, but not Leliana. Uh, we need more dexterity to give her this. We'll give her the ice arrows. And she needs more strength for the good armor that we have. Hello, Leliana. Yes? Uh, I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. Um... This vision of yours. I knew this would come up sooner or later. <sighs> I don't know how to explain, but I had a dream. In it, there was an impenetrable darkness. It was so dense, so real. And there was a noise, a terrible, ungodly noise. I stood on a peak and watched as the darkness consumed everything. And when the storm swallowed the last of the sun's light, I, I fell. And the darkness drew me in. That almost sounds like a warden's dream, so it makes me wonder if she was ever tainted by the blight. I suppose I did. That was what the darkness was, no? When I woke, I roar... went to the Chantry's gardens, as I always do. But that day, the rose bush in the corner had flowered. Everyone knew that bush was dead. It was gray and twisted and gnarled, the ugliest thing you ever saw. But there it was, a single beautiful rose it was as though the maker stretched out his hand to say even in the midst of this darkness there is hope and beauty have faith and this made you want to help me in my dream i fell or or maybe i jumped i'd do anything to stop the blight i know that we can do it there are so many good things in the maker's world how can i sit by while the blight devours Everything. I suppose I couldn't sit by either then. That is why you're a Grey Warden. Come, there's a blight to stop. So I wanted to comment a bit on the, the neck piece thing that she's wearing, because I think I read somewhere ages ago, and I'm probably misquoting this. I think I read that the reason that there's a collar or some kind of neck divider on every armor is because it had to do with like animation and it was easier to animate the face up and not have to worry about this area something like that happened i'd have to go back and find it i'm probably talking out of my ass but yes that's i remember that from somewhere well here i am uh what was life like in the cloister quiet it was a life suited for contemplation in the cloister away from the fuss and the flurry of the cities i found peace and in that stillness, I could hear the Maker. But it was not perfect. Some of my Chantry fellows were condescending. That is the nature of religious folk, I suppose. How was it condescending? When I talked about my beliefs, that the Maker reveals himself in the beauty of his world, they treated me with disdain. They want to believe that he's gone, so that when he turns his gaze on them, it means they are special, chosen. He cannot possibly have love for all. The sick and the weary, the beggars and the fools. Um, <laughs> what did you say to them? What can I say to them? What they believe is what the Chantry says. And the Chantry is infallible, yes? Maybe I am wrong. But it is the Maker's place to decide if I am worthy. Not men. Not the Chantry. But there is work to be done. And I have talked enough for now. I don't think you have. Yes. Uh, I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. What would someone like you be doing in a Chantry cloister in the middle of nowhere like Lothering? What is meant by someone like me? Uh, they don't teach you how to fight in the cloister, do they? 
Did you think I was always a cloistered sister? The Chantry provides succor and safe harbor to all who seek it. I chose to stay and become affirmed. And why were you seeking safe harbor? The Chantry does not pride, and you should. I desired time apart from the world. I was a traveling minstrel in Orlais. Tales and songs were my life. I performed, and they rewarded me with applause and coin. And my skill in battle? Well, you pick up different skills when you travel, yes? Yes, of course. Um, let's move on. Mm, she's not very comfortable about that. Yes. Well, here I am. You were a traveling minstrel. Do you have any tales to share? Of course I do. I love stories far too much to keep them to myself. Everyone should be able to benefit from them, I think. That's nice. Uh, do you have any stories about Orlais? Of course. Orlesians enjoy telling stories. I shall tell you my favorite tale of Aveline, remember the Knight that name. of Orlais. And remember this story. A long time ago, a girl child was born to a farmer. He had hoped for a son, not a daughter, and so he told his wife to abandon the child in the woods. Before the cold could claim her, the baby was found by a tribe of Dalish elves who took pity on the poor mewling thing and raised her as their own. Aveline, for that is what they called her, grew strong and quick and clever under the guidance of the elves. She learned to wield the sword as well as any man, could kill a deer with an arrow at hundred paces, and was as graceful on the back of a horse as she was on foot. Aveline's Dalish guardians saw that she could easily best any Olesian chevalier in battle, and wanted to show the cruel humans the child they had left to die. They bestowed upon her a fine horse and armor, and sent her to prove herself to her people in the Grand Tourney. Now in those days, no woman was allowed to take up arms, let alone compete in the Grand Tourney. But Aveline kept her helmet on and was not discovered. And did she win? Aveline won many events and gained the approval of the adoring crowd. Eventually, she came face to face with the knight Kaleva in the Grand Melee. Aveline had already bested him in the joust, and Kaleva was determined not to lose a second time. Hmm. Out of desperation to regain his honor, Kaleva tripped Aveline and tossed her to the ground, ripping off her helmet as he did so. Silence fell upon the arena as Aveline was revealed. Kaleva declared the previous competitions invalid. A woman had taken part, and this was not allowed. But the crowd cheered for Aveline. Kaleva was furious, for he had lost to a woman and was now being shamed. Blinded by his rage, he forced Aveline to her knees. Know your place, woman, cried he, and slit her throat. Oof, I was hoping for a happy ending. The son of the king, Prince Freyan, was present. He recognized Aveline's skill and bravery and began to see the injustice done to the women in his land. When he was made king, he rewrote the laws of Orlais so that women could also become chevalier. He honored Aveline and knighted her after her death. And to this day, any female who is knighted reveres Aveline the Brave, for she is the patron of all women chevalier. Hmm. Uh, do you know any fraud and legends? I know one. Told to me by my mother a long time ago, it always chilled me to the bone. Maybe you have heard of Flemeth? <laughs> yes, we met Flemeth. Uh, do I want to tell her that it's Morgan's mother or that we met her? Yeah, let's do Morgan's mother. Ah. Uh... Are you sure? Was she the Flemeth of legend? Flemeth, the devourer of men. Flemeth, mother of witches. Flemeth, demon touched, who dwells in the mists. She didn't really introduce herself as such. Ferelden mothers scare their daughters with talk of Flemeth. They say that if you're bad, Flemeth will spirit you away and bind you to her forever. Oh, that's not they good. also say that Flemeth mourns her lost beauty and will steal yours through your looking glass if she catches you. She was beautiful once? Flemeth's beauty was known throughout the land. She had hair like unto a moonless night, skin as pale as winter's first snow, and eyes as beautiful and perilous as the sea. When she came of age, 
she came to the attention of the Lord of Hyever, Conobar, and he took her for his wife. Conobar soon learned that his young bride had the gift of magic. He kept this a secret, for he feared that she would be taken from him. Flemeth stayed with Conobar for some years, and with his blessing, she practiced her art. And then one day, a young poet named Osen came to the castle. Flemeth was captivated by Osen's voice, and he by her beauty, and they fell in love. Mm. The plot thickens. Flemeth longed to be with her true love, and she and Osen fled from Conobar's lands, seeking refuge in the Kokari wilds with the Chasen tribes. They lived there happily for many a year, till the day Flemeth received news that Conobar was dying and longed to see her face one last time. Flemeth's heart swelled with pity for the man who once was her husband and begged Osen to return to Conobar's side with her. But when Flemeth and Osen entered Hyever, they were captured by Conobar's men and Osen was slain in front of Flemeth's eyes. Mm. Flemeth was imprisoned in the highest tower of the castle, there to await Conobar's judgment on her. Distraught at the loss of her love, Flemeth plotted revenge against her husband. She summoned a fey demon, intending for it to wreak vengeance on Conobar. But a spell went awry. The demon possessed Flemeth. Turning her into an abomination, the halls of the castle run red with blood as Flemeth slaughtered Conobar and Jeez. all his men. The last of Flemeth's humanity melted away, and at dawn, she stole back to the wilds to plot and scheme for a hundred years. They say she took to her side many chastened men, and with their help, begat her daughter witches, who even now prowl the dark places of the Kokari wilds. One last tale. Tell me of the darkspawn. Chantry Law says it is man's pride that created the darkspawn. In ages past, the mages of the Tevinder Imperium ruled much of the world we know. In their pride, they thought their magics invincible and imagined mm. that they were greater than the Maker himself. So thinking, they invaded his golden city, planning to take it for themselves and depose their own creator. But they were impure and full of sin. And it is with the sin that they tainted the golden city, corrupting it forever. The Maker cursed them and cast them from his sight. Wherever they went, they spread the taint of their sin. Oh, I just Any noticed. Any land that was touched by the taint became blighted and would suffer no life. Instead, the darkspawn arose to torment us and remind us of our hubris. All right, so that's it for the stories. That's good. We can move on. Um, interesting stuff. Do you want to talk to Sten? Yeah, let's talk to Sten. Why are we stopping? Uh, we're working together. I'd like to get to know you. There are darkspawn to be fought. Is this delay needful? Are you alright? You were in that cage for a few weeks. Nah, no. What's your hurry? What a strange language you speak. You say hurry, where I would say duty. Alright, what's your duty then? Uh, you said you were in the army. I am. Have you ever fought in a war? I have always fought in war, elf. What do you mean by that? My people have been at war since the moment we set foot in the Northern Islands. So the Canari don't come from the islands? We do now. Where did you come from before? Somewhere else. Can you be more specific? No. Why not? I was born in Saharon. Of the land we came from, I know nothing, not even its name. I do not see how this matters. Saharon and Parvolan are distant. Ferelden and the Darkspawn are immediate. Are you all right? You were in that cage for a few weeks. You are concerned. No need. I am fit enough to fight. I've never seen Canary before. Can you tell me more about your people? No. Please? People are not simple. They cannot be summarized for easy reference in the manner of the elves are a lithe, pointy-eared people who excel at poverty. poverty. Jesus. Uh, all right, well, let's keep moving. As you wish. Uh, Morgan, tell me more about you, please. Hello. What do you wish of me? Uh, I'd like to ask you something. If you must. How did you come to be a shapeshifter? I was not born such. Tis a skill of Flemeth's, taught over many years in the wilds. 
The chastened have tales of we witches, saying that we assume the forms of creatures to watch them from hiding. Hmm. When a child is alone and separate from his tribe, that is when we strike, dragging the young boy kicking and screaming to our lair to be devoured. A most amusing legend. Uh, your mother's been doing this for some time, then. Changing her form, certainly. Devouring lost children, I cannot say. She has not done it in my experience, though in truth my lifespan is but a fraction of her own. Why do you ask? Is there something specific you wish to know? Um, can you change into other human forms? The form of an animal is different from my own. One may study the creature, learn to move as it does, think as it does. In time, this allows one to become as it is. I gain nothing by studying another human. I already am the same as they are. I learn nothing. So the answer is no. My human form is the only one I possess. Uh, do you spend a lot of time as an animal? There were nights when the wilds called to me. It is true. You look upon the world around you and you think you know it well. I have smelled it as a wolf, listened as a cat, prowled shadows that you never dreamed existed. Mm. But my life is as a human. I am under no illusions to the contrary. I, uh, what other animals, what do the other animals think of when you're changed? They do not shy away from me. To their senses, I believe I seem like any other of their species. As to what they think, I truly cannot say. Just as I am still human, no matter my form, they are still animals. Thus, they cannot speak, even were I to ask. I've never heard of magic like this before. No? Tis not unheard of in the remote corners of the world. There are traditions of magic outside of the Circle of Magi, despite what those mages would have you believe. Some of these traditions are old, indeed, passed down as carefully guarded law from one generation to the next. The zealots of the Chantry would uproot all such practitioners if they could. But as luck have it, some still exist. My mother is such a one. Uh, by practitioners, you mean apostates. Ah, uh, no. That's good. Such traditions should be preserved. I'm shocked that you think so. Being a mage of the circle as you were... But perhaps you felt a little like a caged bird as well, caught within that dark tower. Um. Yes. I thought so. Can anyone become a shapeshifter? Anyone with sufficient will. But the act of transformation is a magical one. It is a spell and thus requires a mage's talents. Indeed, you could learn the spells required if I cared to teach you. That's all. Indeed. Have you an opinion on my abilities, then? Am I an unnatural abomination to be put to the torch? I think that you sound useful. Oh! You're simply full of surprises, little man, aren't you? But enough of such talk. Let us proceed, lest the dust gather on us. What do you wish of me? If you must. Mm. Did you grow up in the wild? So this is going to be an episode where I think we do a lot of talking to our companions and then move on. So if you want to skip past all of this, probably another... 10 minutes or so maybe maybe not that much maybe five because we got to do and we already did stand so morgan's the last one keep posted did you go up in the why logs? do you ask me such questions i do not probe you for pointless information do i um uh, so in dragon age origins i like the morgan romance number one because i think it's canon um because of the the the, the witch hunter dlc and then just the interactions in the later games. But I also really like it because I think it's kind of, it's, it's, it's very bittersweet. So that's the one we're going to be going for. So I'm going to say, you can probe me anytime. Beg pardon then while I jump for joy. What is it you asked if I grew up in the wilds? A curious question. Where else would you picture me? For many years it was simply Flemeth and I. The wilds and its creatures were more real to me than Flemeth's tales of the world of man. In time, I grew curious. I left the wilds to explore what lay beyond, never for long. 
brief forays into a civilized wilderness. But she kept going back to the wilds. Would you not do the same? Your world is an unforgiving and cold place. The wilds I hail from is home to me and I a natural denizen. For all that I had been taught, however, the truth of the civilized lands proved to be overwhelming. Hmm. I was unfamiliar with so much. So confident and bold was I, yet there was much that Flemeth could never have prepared me for. Very daring. It sounds just like you. <laughs> Equal parts daring and foolhardy, perhaps. Only once was I accused of being a witch of the wilds, and that by a chastened who happened to be traveling with a merchant caravan. He pointed and gasped and began shouting in his strange language, and most assumed he was casting some curse upon me. I acted the terrified girl, and naturally, he was arrested. What happened to the poor man? Who cares? As I recall, he was executed. The point being that I was able to move through human lands fairly easily. Whatever humans think a witch of the wild looks like, tis not I. Not that I did not have trouble. There are things about human society which have always puzzled me, such as the touching. Why all the touching for a simple greeting? Um, touching, like a handshake? To begin with, yes. What is the point of touching my hand? I find it an offensive intrusion. There were many nuances that Flemeth could never tell me of. When to look into another's eyes. How to eat at a table. How to bargain without offending. None of these things I knew. I still do not understand it all, truth be told. But then I gave up long ago any hope of doing so. When I returned to the wilds last, I swore to Flemeth that I had no intention of leaving again. <laughs> uh, well, I'm glad it worked out this way, at least. Yes? Let's ignore the entire Darkspawn threat and the presence of a simpleton as your only <laughs> other Grey Warden ally, then. Not that I lack appreciation for the intent of your comment. Thank you. Well, let's get on with it before the ground opens up and swallows us, yes? So that conversation there, to me, it it highlights how drastic the change in her character is from Origins to the third game, Inquisition. But we'll talk more about that when we, when we interact with her in that game. Yes. Uh, so life in the wild, yeah, life in the wild sounds like it must have been pretty lonely. At times, perhaps, a world full of people and buildings and things was all very foreign to me. If I wished companionship, I ran with the wolves and flew with the birds. If I spoke, it was to the trees. Uh, and but eventually, you, uh, mm, I'm an elf. It sounds wonderful. For a time, but one can only remain a child for so long. I recall the first time I crept beyond the edge of the wilds. I did so in animal form, remaining in the shadows and watching these strange townsfolk from afar. I happened upon a noblewoman by her carriage, adorned in sparkling garments the likes of which I had never before seen. I was dazzled. This, to me, seemed what true wealth and beauty must be. I snuck up behind her and stole a hand mirror from the carriage. It was encrusted in gold and crystalline gemstones, and I hugged it to my chest with delight as I sped back to the wilds. Uh, what happened then? Flemeth was furious with me. I was a child and had not yet come into my full power, and I had risked discovery for the sake of a pretty bauble. To teach me a lesson, Flemeth took the mirror and smashed it upon the ground. I was heartbroken. But you were just a child. And a foolish one. Flemeth was right to break me of my fascination. Beauty and love are fleeting and have no meaning. Survival has meaning. Power has meaning. Without those lessons, I would not be here today, as difficult as they might have been. But they made you stronger, didn't they? They did indeed. To return to your original question, perhaps my time in the wilds was indeed lonely. But such was how it had to be. I find myself at times wondering what might have become of the girl with the beautiful golden mirror. But such fantasies have no place amidst reality. Hmm. She approved of that conversation a lot. I think we're going to give her the tribal necklace as well that we have. A fine gift. 
You have my thanks. And then we'll give Liliana this small carved statuette. Oh, how dear of you. Thank you. Oh. Uh, dirty pair of pantaloons. For Unexpected. Time. Thank you. Apparently he liked them. <laughs> uh, that alcohol is for a different companion. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, Morgan, yes. do you have any more conversations that we had? So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> uh, have you ever been hunted by the Chantry? <laughs> you are very cute to ask so many questions. I do my best. Uh, and you are cute when you're evasive. Really? Perhaps we should be wrapped in ribbons and adorned with flowers. So cute are we, too. <laughs> my mother has been hunted from time to time, yes. By Templar fools like Alistair, which should tell you how successful they generally were. Flemeth made a bit of a game of it, in fact. The Templars would come again, and she would look at me and smile and say that the fun was to begin once more. I feel sorry for the Templars. They came with as much swagger and arrogance as they did self-righteousness. Pity them if you wish, for they held none for us. Mm. Flemeth would warn them once. It was a warning they inevitably failed to heed. And then the true game them. began. Often Flemeth would use me as bait. <laughs> a little girl to scream and run and lure the Templars deeper into the wilds and to their doom. Surely more would have followed. Sometimes. Eventually. Thankfully, the wilds is a vast place. Once they found us, Flemeth would simply move us elsewhere and we would be lost within the forest once again. I did not understand the danger we faced until I was much older. I had never heard of apostates or maleficarum. Do you still think it was fun? I think that my mother made it fun so that a child did not learn to fear. And I think that it was necessary. There are no trials for apostates, no prisons, no mercy. Hmm. There are only absolutes. So only survival matters. If the wilds have taught me anything, tis this. First, you must survive. Do you disagree? Uh, yes, there are things that are worse than death. Oh? I would ask what exactly, but I'm certain that would be a lengthy conversation. And suddenly I grow very weary. Enough of this talk. Let us return to the task at hand. Ooh, that was not a good option for him. Um, so I think that I'm kind of conflicted as far as with this character because I think that he, I think that he probably does worship the Maker. I think that he, the Chant of Light is probably important to this character. I think that he sees the value in the Circle as a place of study and learning, but I think that he thinks that the Chantry and the Templars go too far. Yes. We're kind of coming close to our time because I have a. A Star Wars RPG game here to run in a little bit. We're gonna so, try to get through her full of questions, are you? <laughs> I'm noticing that her hair textures here are kind of messed up, and that's a little funny to me. Is Flemeth what she appears to be? <laughs> well, that depends, does it not? What does she seem to be? Uh, human. Oh, she certainly was human once. Tell me, how much do you know of the tale? The one that the chastened still tell of my mother to frighten them into obedience. Well, we just heard about it from Liliana. So, I'm more interested in the truth. I can relay what Flemeth once told me herself, and you can decide whether or not tis the truth, if you desire. Uh, yeah, that sounds interesting. As the tale is sung by the bards, there was a time when Flemeth was young and beautiful. A fair lass in a land of barbarian men. The desire of any who saw her. Just how long ago? Many centuries. Before this land was even named Ferelden. The tales say that Flemeth fell in love with Osin the Bard, and fled the castle of her husband, the dreadlord Conobar, and that he swore vengeance for her infidelity. In truth. My mother claims that t'was Osen who was her husband, and Conobar the jealous lord who looked on from afar. 
Lord Conobar approached young Osen and offered him wealth and power in exchange for his lovely wife. And Osen agreed. Wow. Flemeth must have been angry. The life of a bard is a poor one, and love fades in the wake of hunger. It was Flemeth who suggested the arrangement. All would have been well had Lord Conobar kept his end of the bargain. But he was a foul man who bargained with coin he did not possess. Osen was led off to a field and slain, left for dead. Flemeth spoke to the spirits and learned of the deed, and swore revenge. But wasn't she now married? Mm, so she truly loved Osen then? That was not the point. Conobar had no honor, so she would not have him. Flemeth begged the spirits to aid her, and twas they who slew Conobar. The demon the legend tells of came later. Lord Conobar's allies chased Flemeth, you see. Chased her to the wilds, and there she hid. There she found the demon, and he made her strong. The legends all speak of the great hero Cormac, he who defeated Flemeth and her great army when she invaded the lowlands centuries later. All lies. Which, that she never invaded, or... Uh, that he never defeated her. The truth of the matter is that there was never an invasion. As Flemeth tells it, the Chastened never raised an army under her banner, and she never fought with any warrior named Cormac. Cormac led a brutal civil war against his own people, and later claimed it was to vanquish evil that had taken root amongst the lords. Thus, he was hailed a hero. Flemeth was only attached to the legend much later. Perhaps it was due to the great war with the Chastened that eventually came, but Mother claims not to know how it began. Do you believe her version? I do not believe everything that Flemeth claims. Oft it seems her bitterness has colored her memories. Hmm. But on the whole, yes, I believe this tale, if not all. Uh, how is it that Flemeth has survived? The demon so within her has transformed her into something else. An abomination, perhaps, some would say. I know not. I only know my mother is clever, and she is part of the wilds as it is part of her. Mm. But she is no immortal. She bleeds. A blade in her heart would kill her like any other, were it lucky enough to find her. Uh, and the tales of her having many daughters? You ask if I have sisters. I have asked of this myself. The stories tell of many witches of the wilds after all, not just the one. And these tales existed long before I did. Flemeth refuses to speak of other daughters, if they existed. So, should I believe I am her first? I doubt that, too. Why would she refuse to speak of them? The Chastened tell of a falling out between Flemeth and her daughters. They say that one day she hunted them all through the wilds and ate their hearts. It may be true. I have never seen another witch or heard of one. Perhaps one day Flemeth will eat my heart as well. Aren't abominations usually insane horrors? How often is this usually? Always? If not always, then when is it not true? Hmm. There are more things in this world and the next than you or I could ever hope to understand. What Flemeth became is a mystery. I suspect even to her. Interesting. Uh, thank you. Flemeth tells it with far more embellishment than I, but you are welcome. Dare I ask of your own mother? Few are abominations of legend, tis true, but I find myself curious nevertheless. Um, I love her. Is there anything else you'd like to know? I... nothing. I wish to know nothing more. I find myself a little envious, to tell the truth. But it matters not. Let us move on. Uh, we're going to yes. try to wrap up here with asking her something personal. We are in camp, so tis as good a time as any. I'm go What's for it. this? <laughs> tis a rather odd discussion you seem to desire, leaning in so closely. Uh, do you object? Not unless you stop. Woo, we did it. <laughs> Successful romance. So early in the game, too. Ah, well, she approved. Uh, do you have any more yes. conversation to be had? 
So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> uh, are you really Flemeth's daughter? I assume you were actually asking whether Flemeth herself gave birth to me. Truly, I do not know. I once asked Flemeth that very question, and she merely laughed at me. It is not inconceivable that she could Kate capture Mulder's a chastened cackle. man, or perhaps change to a more attractive form to attract him willingly. I find it more difficult to imagine her with child. Hmm. Can an abomination even reaper? No. Could she have stolen you? It seems likely, does it not? In an animal form, a babe could easily be spirited away and raised as Flemeth's own. I do know the tales of Flemeth having many daughters, even though I have never met another. And Flemeth has always treated me as her blood. Uh, does that mean you love her? <laughs> what an odd thing to say! Why must love enter into the equation? Flemeth taught me everything I needed to learn. How to survive, the meaning of power, the truth of men. If other mothers do not teach these things, then I believe them the lesser. Uh, I guess that's true in, in a from a certain point of view. You suppose it's true? Tis true. Take yourself. You do not honestly desire such things from me, do you? Tis better to be free of such cloying and cluttering delusions as love. Uh, and what if I did want that? Then more the fool you, I think. I tire of this discussion. Let us move on, shall we? She liked it, though. She liked that I want that. Uh, all right. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching. Uh, we got through all the talking this episode, so next time we'll have more action. Um, I appreciate having you along this journey with me, and I look forward to having you next time. Uh, if no one's told you already today, remember that I love you, and uh, have a good rest of your day. Bye.